Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm a little bit new here, so I'm going to take a moment to introduce myself. But uh, my name is Brandy Camel, and I'm the community manager for Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, we know right now that it's been kind of tough to get everybody together to play your D&D games right now, but there are so many great digital tools out there that allow you to bring your friends together and run games. And so we wanted to take the opportunity to introduce you to a few of those tools. And today we're going to be working in Fantasy Grounds with a couple of folks who work at Fantasy Grounds. So uh, joining me today, uh, we've got Doug and Jen. Uh, if you guys don't mind taking a moment to introduce yourselves, Doug, go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Doug Davison. I'm the president and one of the owners of uh, SmiteWorks, the creators of Fantasy Grounds. And I'm going to be playing a, a bard for the first time, I think, maybe ever. So, very cool. Awesome. Jen, how about you? Hey, I'm Jen Page. I'm the marketing specialist for Fantasy Grounds. And today I am going to attempt to play a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So uh, for those of you watching, uh, I want to give you kind of an overview of how this is going to go. We are going to be broadcasting from my perspective as the Dungeon Master because we want you to learn as much about Fantasy Grounds as possible uh, in the process. That does mean there's going to be spoilers for the adventure that we're playing because you're going to see a lot more than you would see as the player uh, during the course of the adventure. We will be playing through the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak, which is the adventure that's included in the D&D Essentials Kit. So if you haven't played that before, be aware. Spoilers for this. Uh, like every good adventure, though, we're going to start with creating our characters. So uh, Jen and Doug have somewhat prepared their characters in advance, but I, I'm going to spin up kind of a dummy character here and walk you guys through the process so that you know what it's like to create a character in Fantasy Grounds and, uh, and while they're kind of finishing up and wrapping things together. So... I think we're starting from scratch, aren't we? Are you guys starting from scratch? I yeah, think I gonna... threw mine out the window. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> We're doing some testing. Didn't know how much we kept. So. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> oh, and one more caveat that I wanted to throw out because it's important. We are using the Unity version of Fantasy Grounds, which is a relatively new introduction. It's, I believe it's an early access right now. Yes, it's an early access. It's, an, it's our open beta. So it's gone through a closed beta. And now it's, it's been in, I guess, early access since mid-March. And so there's still a lot of issues that we're still working on. We haven't fine-tuned it or optimized it yet. So uh, expect some bugs and, and potentially even some crashes along the way, but uh, we think it's it's still going to be good for, for playing, and, and that's what we're going to find out here on, on live uh, Twitch. Awesome. My monitor may catch on fire. <laughs> it might. It might. <laughs> it's good entertainment. All right. I'm raising your guys' audio, by the way, in the background. I guess you guys were a little quiet, but that's on my end. So. All right. Great. Okay. Cool. I went into my settings, too, but I didn't know if it was helping or... Just creating more chaos. <laughs> no, it's all good. All good. Should be better on my end. So give, give you uh, guys a moment and should be good to go. I will go ahead and kick the character. Now, what's kind of nice is I can actually see the characters that already exist in here, right? Um, the yeah. ones that you guys are oh, yeah. working on. Perfect. So we've got uh, Jenkins O'Blarney being created here. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you went with that name. That's pretty great. I, I asked uh, I asked both of them for a name, uh, just throwing something out there, and, and I heard Blarney. Blarney. So I, I had yeah. to work that into the character somehow. So hey, it sounds like it would be a good good name for a rogue. I'm full of Blarney. <laughs> All right, and I'm seeing a couple of selections by Jen here. Figure out which one is the one she's actually. Yeah, no, I'm just kind of clicking around and <laughs> making a mess. All right, I'm going to start rolling some, some uh, dice. So uh, one of the things that we're going to do, I can put it in chat. Uh, in order to oh, roll 46 and then drop the lowest, you can uh, use one of our macro commands to do that. So it's going to be slash die, 4d6, and then d1 to drop the dice. Uh, oh, and then I'm trying to type it in chat, and it doesn't recognize that as a command. <laughs> oops. So, oops. Uh, <laughs> There we go. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to roll. I'm going to do that six times, and then I'm going to drag those over to my character's attributes. And then once I've done that, I'm going to add in a background and a race and a class and then some inventory and spells. So that's that should be pretty quick for me to kind of whip through that real quick with the bard. And Jen's doing the same as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to do the same as well just so that we can show it up on the screen as we're going. So I'm making this DM test character so we know who it is and why it's there. D6, D1, 
one. See all the dice going crazy right now. <laughs> oh, I actually got a decent, really nice roll. Man, you guys, uh, you guys are going to be in for a treat with this. <laughs> Ten. Nice. Nine, I'm rolling. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh -huh. uh, let's see. So when you're dragging and dropping the macro, are you just dragging and dropping the 40, 60, 1? So uh, what I did is I typed in, typed in that macro, and then once it's in chat, you click that, and you drag it down to one of your hotkey bars, and then you can just click the hotkey bar six times, uh, and it'll fire them off. Gotcha. Okay. So for me, it's dragging the result. Is there a better way for me doing it? Oh, you don't, you don't hit enter. You just Yeah, before you type drag. enter. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. See, and this is why we're doing this, guys. It's for me to learn and for you guys to learn. So. <laughs> so knowledgeable. <laughs> it's like all I know. Okay. So now that it's typed here, now I click and drag it, and it's down here on my bar. Yeah. It's still really quiet. I can I can up their volume a bit. I more. can start shouting for no reason. <laughs> if that helps. I've got it's just like a regular Monday morning meeting with the team. <laughs> right. In I'm the middle of someone that. else's update, Jen just starts shouting and you know. <laughs> We support her, even though she has Tourette's. It's fine. <laughs> All right, let me crank this up a little bit. That should do that as well. Gosh, I'm just, where are my big rolls? <laughs> All right, everybody send good karma to yeah, uh, everyone to can Jen everyone for the next roll. <laughs> moment. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go back to bed. <laughs> Did you get your high roll in there? Yeah. You can do it. Let's see. Oh, there we bad. go. That's pretty decent. This yeah, seems what, pretty solid. Yeah, I'll put that in Dex. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, how many? How many did I do? Was that all of them? Uh, I can't you've got one more. Okay, sweet. Come on, big money. Huh? Uh, 14. Hey, okay. huh? Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Okay. Not too bad. I think your lowest is still a 10. That's not too shabby. I, I started with a 9, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> is that your first roll? Yeah, my first roll was a 9. A 9. Yeah. Yep. So we got a 9. I always seem to sit at the table when everyone gets together and, like, one person will roll, like, two 18s. I'll never, ever get 18, so. I've never been one of the lucky ones to uh, succeed with those kind of things. We're going to see, oh, a seven. Oh, my. I'm really glad this is a dummy character. <laughs> and an eight. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, that's pretty spectacularly terrible. <laughs> nice. With those kinds of results, that to me looks like a a big a throwaway character. A, yeah. a big dumb barbarian. <laughs> like, <No. laughs> <laughs> All right, gotta find some portraits. Take that a seven and we'll put it in our ints and <laughs> Which numbers have I not used yet? I already used my fourteen, my fifteen. Mm hmm my seven, my eight. Oh, right. I still have a nine to use. And so we're also just building our characters from whatever is available in the Dungeons and Dragons Essentials Kit. Yep. So we're kind of limiting our options. So you, you won't see us pick, you know, uh, specialty versions of humans or uh, sub races and other like uh, class archetypes that are not in the Essentials Kit just because uh, we wanted to kind of show off what's it, what's included just out of the box. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I believe in the Essentials Kit, you have a choice of four or five different races and five different classes. Yeah. So it's a, it's a smaller pool of stuff, but it really helps, you know, newer players and newer DMs get the hang of the rules before they jump into anything too complex, so. All right, so I've got my class and race and uh, stats all done. I just need to do my... Oh my inventory. gosh, you're just powering through this. Inventory <laughs> of spells. 
Wait a second. <laughs> we we like, do have yeah. <laughs> We do have a character wizard that uh, is unfortunately not quite 100% ready yet, but we're working on that where it'll basically just be like a, a quick little walkthrough with like five or six steps. You just click through it and it builds a character for you in, in a minute or so. But, so we're doing it the old fashioned way, which is the current method of dragging and dropping stuff to our character. And then like mm -hmm. for instance, when I drag in my race, it gives me all of the abilities, uh, the bumps to all of my stats because I did a human. So it added plus one to all of my stats uh, and it set my base speed, it set my size, uh, gave me my two spoken languages, one of which is uh, common, and then the other one is a choice that I can type in my choice. And then on my, and that's on my abilities under languages. So uh, I think you were going to be an elvish, uh, an elven yeah. thing. So I'm going to pick elvish, an yeah. elvish criminal. So I'm going to choose elvish as one of my languages so I can speak in elvish uh, with Jen when, when she's up and running. So. Mm -hmm. Right. So for those of you who are watching here, a lot of these different kinds of traits and stuff are preloaded based off the rules that you've selected when you first start up the campaign. So in this case, we've loaded the basic rules and the essentials kit, uh, which gives you pretty much everything you need to start with. Um, the library, I've found, is that's pretty much your core for everything. Anything that you need to find, you can find from the library window. So you'll probably be spending a lot of time there. <laughs> In the mm -hmm. library. Mm -hmm. Yep. With with the candlestick. <laughs> <laughs> so in this case, uh, I can't, came over to library. I selected classes, brought up this nice window of all the classes I have available to me. Barbarian's not an option in, in the essentials kit, so I've gone with fighter, which for the sad stats I have is probably the best I can make of it. <laughs> not going to be casting any ninth level spells soon with that mm -hmm. character. No, definitely not. <laughs> And then when you drag over like a, a weapon, for instance, uh, it'll automatically equip the weapon for you, but you can toggle your inventory to be like carried or equipped so that it'll uh, auto calculate your encumbrance for you on your character sheet. So you don't have to do that like you do in person. Uh, and then it'll also add an actions section with your attacks built in based off of your stats and your level and all that sort of goodness. Mm -hmm. Let's see, this, this seems like a, a dwarf fighter. Nice and straightforward and give me a little bit more burly. Bump my con a bit. <laughs> and what's really nice is the DM and actually as a player too, you can kind of check in on what other people's characters have with a certain amount of visibility, right? So as a DM, I can see everything, right? I can take a look. Mm -hmm. At Jenkins O'Blarney, I can see what all of his <laughs> skills are that he's selected. Yes. I can check his inventory and all the things he's added, uh, and if there's any notes that he's made. Things, things yeah. Give me lots of good magic items to help my survival rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and that's actually what's kind of nice, too, is that if I do have a magic item that I want a specific person to have found or picked up, I can find that magic item in the library and then click and drag it to the character. So it'll go into their inventory. And as we're going along and we're kind of walking you guys through these things, if you have questions in chat, feel free to, to, to ask. You know, that's what we're here to help you guys learn. I'm definitely learning along the way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm a very new introduction to Fantasy Ground, so it's a good opportunity for us to figure this out as we go. All right, how are you guys' characters coming along? Uh, just about done. Just need to do my spells. Yeah, I got to do inventory and stuff and set up sneak attack. Yeah, and so, you know, the nice thing about when you drag and drop your classes and, and your backgrounds over, it'll tell you um, all of that information is contained on your character sheet. So you just click a button and it opens it up for reference. It'll tell you, like, what kind of equipment. If you're new to Dungeons & Dragons, it'll tell you what kind of equipment, um, for instance, a entertainer might have. So an enter entertainer has an uh, entertainer's pack. And when I drag that from the inventory uh, items list over to my inventory, it'll add all of those items automatically to my character sheet. And then I can just move stuff around. So like one of my items that comes with that is a backpack and I can associate everything and say, okay, this is in my backpack. So I've got a list of things that are now displayed as in my backpack. 
in case someone was to, I don't know, steal my backpack from me or something, I would then lose everything that was in it. Which makes it easy for me as a DM to, <laughs> to manage yeah. those kinds of things. Yes. Okay. I think I'm going to use some illusion spells as a bard. That seems like that would be helpful for telling stories. I'm going to be a storyteller bard instead of a uh, music, musician, uh, musical type. Because okay. I have. I have the kind of voice that sounds a lot like scraping a rusty blade across a chiseled <laughs> stone floor. So uh, I need to look for other ways of entertaining people. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You'll tell us inspiring stories. Yes. I've definitely played with a variety of different kinds of bards that find their ways to inspire people in unique <laughs> and different manners. Uh, yeah, actually, I saw on uh, one of the Facebook groups for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, someone was talking about how a character in their campaign basically uh, gives uplifting stories and tells stories about, oh, did I, you ever hear the story of the barbarian with the extreme strength? And then that's how I cast, like, full strength and stuff. I thought that was kind of clever. Nice. So I'm going to co-opt a little bit of that. So uh, kudos <laughs> to whoever that was. Well, I wish I would have written down their, their name, but that is Great not story. my idea. Mm. Right. Another thing about Fantasy Grounds is that it doesn't restrict your character because um, we don't know what kind of homebrew rules you might be running in your campaign. The DM can always open it up and look at it and then judge a character to say, okay, how did you get a 27 strength <laughs> or something like that? <laughs> Um, but if I was to type in 27 for my strength, it would actually, you know, it would let me go and do all that. So um, it's very similar to when you're playing around a table. Anything you can write on your character sheet, you can do it within Fantasy Grounds, and we're not going to prohibit you from doing that. We're just going to, you know, let you run the game the way that you choose to run it. And that's really the idea is that it's got a lot of these things that are kind of guiding you along. It's very similar to the way that, honestly, the Dungeon Master's Guide or the Player's Handbook is written, which is... These are a set of guidelines. These are, <laughs> here's, here are the things that you start with, and really you can do anything. With it. I have to be a player on an upcoming one shot on Fantasy Grants this week, so it's helpful. Great. Let us know if there's any, okay. anything specific uh, that you'd like us to cover. Syntax. Yeah, I know as a player, it can be. It can be overwhelming how how much it it almost feels like it's a sandbox, right? That it's like, where do I start? How do I do this? If I click on this, am I going to do it wrong? There's just this this tool is just so robust. It it can be a little intimidating, but once you get to understand and trust that, you know, oh, this worked and this did that, and wow, look at how this automates for me. You you quickly learn to appreciate it. It's an interesting question. And this is one I wouldn't know the answer to. Uh, is there a requirement to create a D&D &D character in a specific order for the mechanics to work correctly? Uh, in order for Fantasy Grounds to work optimally, uh, the way that I recommend people do it is they, um, you know, put a, create a brand new character, put a name, and, you know, maybe pick a portrait if you want. You can do the portrait anytime you want, but um, that way when you're seeing in the chat, when you roll dice, it'll have your portrait next to you. It just makes it easier to identify which roles are yours versus someone else's if you're mm -hmm. in a, you know, mixed uh, campaign. And then the other thing that I like to do is, is do attributes. So uh, either assign your attributes with the standard array or roll your dice, get all the attributes out of the way. And then I do it in, in this order. I do uh, backgrounds and uh, race and then class. And the reason why I do, uh, you can actually switch uh, race and background if you want. But the reason why I do race before I do um, my, the rest of my character, I guess, is because the race adjusts your character stats. And so your attributes will go up or down depending on which race you choose. And it's not so much that it has to be done that way mechanically. It's just that it's helpful as a player to see how that impacts the other decisions. That you're making. Correct. Correct. So it doesn't sound like there's any kind of mechanical limitation on what order to do things. No, in. you can do things in any order you want. Uh, the only thing is if you, if you assign like the race and stuff before you've done your, um, 
your actual attribute roles. You just need to know that, okay, well, it already added my plus two to con. So if you uh, drag over the value, don't replace my plus two, you need to add the plus two uh, manually. Okay. Group of friends parsed a lot of homebrew material into Fantasy Grounds. Very nice. It's always there put together each time we start a new campaign, and it's awesome. Yeah. And that's what's great is that it's a, it's a creator's tool as much as it's a tool with a lot of, you know, prepackaged stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, we have. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that we support is uh, Dungeon Masters Guild. And so Dungeon Masters Guild, people are able to create their own content, upload stuff there, and then make some money from their creations. And, uh, you know, in addition to making PDFs, you can export your creations within Fantasy Ground. So if you fill out a bunch of new classes and races and NPCs or whatever uh, you want, you could export those into a mod file, post it up to DMs Guild, and sell it and make some make some money on the side too. That's awesome. <laughs> That's very cool. Process of doing just that. Nice. So we've got some some creators who are working in Fantasy Grounds already in chat. So I see Jenkins O'Blarney is rolling for his, <laughs> yeah, for his my, personality uh, traits. Ideals and bonds and flaws, and we'll just kind of see if I can work with this. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. So I'm going to show how, how we went ahead and did that as well. So those are listed under tables, correct? Uh, so if you open up your background, all of those tables are automatically linked to your background, and then you can open up all the related tables. You can also go directly to tables and search for it, but uh, I find it easier to just open it directly from the background. Okay. And that's on your main tab. I see that. Oh. Yeah. Now, for me, it's not opening. This may be user error, so... Let's see if I can look on the on the chat here. All right, so the background. Oh, so if you uh, if you not drag your background over, it won't be there to to link. So um, oh okay. So, so you see, you've got your list of backgrounds in your library. You can just open them directly from there if you want. Okay, that is ah, and then there drag, we go. drag your background over, and then once you have your background, you just click on the uh, little, uh, okay. shortcut link for it, and then that opens up the description. Gotcha. Well, this this spider seems like she's a soldier because she doesn't have much else going on for her. So. <laughs> We'll add that. Yeah, so we have all of this open up. It gives me the efficiencies. Yep. Now here's a mistake that I made is that because I chose my background after I chose skills from fighter, I you ended up chose the same skill. Yeah. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if that happens, that's the nice thing about this is that it's easy. It's just like in a paper sheet where you erase the one thing. And you, oh, I already got that, so I, I shifted over to something else. So you can you can just toggle what skills you have proficiency in pretty easily by just clicking on uh, the little icon next to it, and then it'll cycle through not proficient, proficient, half proficiency, or double proficiency because there are some special classes and abilities that give you not just a proficiency but like a half or a double. I think the uh, the bar jack of all trades would be good where you could probably use the half proficiency on all of the things that you're not proficient in. That might yeah. be a way to handle jack of all trades once you get that ability. So in this case, just to show that, like, I've been able to open all these windows by just kind of trickling in things that I needed, right? So maybe I want to go back and reference what did I miss in fighter that I could have taken instead of the things that I did that my trait's now giving me. So able to just click on fighter my class and level click on the information icon opens the fighter tab you know, now i can scroll down here and see what proficiencies are and what skills that i would have had access to at that point if it's something that i didn't already so let's see i don't know we'll take history dwarves tend to be very historical creatures and maybe perception i'm not very good at it so i need <laughs> Helpful to have a homebrew race saved for new adventures, fantasy grounds for years, and I love that it's still being updated and improved. So I'm going to share actually um, a section from the reference manual. Uh, oh, I tried to, but I couldn't because um, I don't own it. Ah. Um, but <laughs> under the reference manual, under uh, describing your character. 
Critter, mm-hmm. crit, uh, chapter one is creating a character, and then the the fourth step, there's a, a table with like if you wanted to randomly roll your height and weight and all that kind of stuff. There you go. There. Yep. Oh, so I'm bringing it up on my end. So here's the reference manual um, that Doug's talking about. So I opened the D&D Essentials Kit rulebook from the library. You know, always go back to the library if you get lost. Uh, and then head to chapter one, creating a character. Go to backgrounds, and it'll bring up all of the information on background. It's just like turning a page, right? Yeah. So you can see all of the different suggested characteristics here mm-hmm. and all the bonds and flaws and things like that. So we'll take Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say, and then the, the nice thing is if you wanted to share that page with your players as a DM, like if you're walking a group of brand new players through how to create a character, um, at the very top of every one of those pages, there's there's kind of the, the left-hand side is a table of contents. The right-hand side of the reference manual is the, the content for that page. So if you scroll to the top of that page, there's a little link. You can click on that and it pops the page out of the book, basically. And then you could drag that to chat and then your players can just open it up directly. So you don't even have to tell them how to get to the page. You just say, oh, here, read this section. This is the section that you're looking for. So an experienced DM can really easily kind of help walk players through. Yeah, just drag it anywhere to the chat. Anywhere to the chat? Okay. And it should should just feel let it go. Oh, there we go. go yeah. Yep. And so now I see soldier and I can click on soldier and I can read the same page that my DM is reading. And it's usually these little eye icons are pretty much the, the key for everything. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it depends on the theme. Like this theme is is called simple brown. Mm-hmm. And this is a real popular uh, minimalist kind of a theme that's more modern. Uh, we have another one that's called uh, just the 5e official theme. It, ha- it has like a, a high contrast, like almost like a white background with black and red. It has little dragon heads for the icons on that particular system. And then we have the built-in one, which is a, like a stitched leather theme. And it has like a little brown shield that it uses for the icon. So okay. everyone will have a little bit different kind of look and feel to it based off the theme that you're running. But the same principle applies. That little icon is always in the, the same relative position on any of the windows. And you can do that with anything. And, and you could drag it to your chat window uh, to share it. You can drag it to any of your hotkey bars at the bottom of the page and then refer to it later on as well. Mm-hmm. And I went with the simple brown just because, you know, we knew we were going to be streaming this. We wanted it to be easy to parse at a glance. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I'm short. I'm five foot two. <laughs> it's a short bard. <laughs> yeah. So do you tell short stories then? <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. All right. So I do see a question. When you create a character using material a DM paid for and shared, let's say content for Eberron, can you take that character to a game where the DM does not own that content, assuming the player does not own the content themselves? If you export the character out, uh, like the DM can export the character, give you the XML file, it'll still have that character, but the links will basically prompt and say, hey, you don't own this this manual. So you'll be able to utilize it. but You'll be able to utilize it. It'll already have everything in there. It's just any of the, the additional details that you would normally be able to access by clicking on the icon, uh, it won't have anything to pop up because you don't have that source material anymore. Gotcha. All right, so seven times four. 28 plus 110, 138 pounds, <laughs> five foot two, human. Dude. Short and stocky. Yeah, a little bit stocky. A little bit. A little bit stocky, yeah. <laughs> All right. So if I was using, so I'm doing the same thing that they've done earlier, right? They've already role to this soldier person or their personality traits on their tables. And now that I've rolled that, it should have added it to the character, correct? Uh, now you drag it to your notes tab. Which ah, okay. Is, uh, so, uh, oh, I think that's what I'm missing. And you just drag from the text portion over. Yep. I'm thinking that can, uh, yeah, you got it. Yeah. yeah. Just to save a little bit of typing. I mean, you could just type anything in there as well. So I think the flaws and the ideals and all that kind of stuff, I don't think it's like you have to roll from the list. You could pick your own if you want when you're making the character or uh, pick something from the list or just create your own, I think, as well. Those are kind of like just ideas of of some potential flaws and and stuff that you might want. 
-hmm. Absolutely. We're here to take you guys' questions. Honestly, we just want everybody to learn. There's a lot to dive into. It's a very, you know, as Jen was saying earlier, it's a very robust tool. You can do a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot to learn. <laughs> Finish one table, open another one, roll again. Straightforward. Easy once you get going. Yeah. And it doesn't automate it, you know, 100%. You're going to see when we play the game that we automate some portions of the game and then other things uh, you handle pretty much the same way you would around the table. One of those things that I'm going to uh, be using a lot is Bardic Inspiration. So in Bardic Inspiration, I mostly want to use Fancy Grounds to track how many times I've used it, but there's not really a mechanic that will uh, allow me to for instance, give Jen's character bardic inspiration and have it automatically calculate that. So what she can do instead, and, and there's a little bit of a difference too, because depending on how much other automation we're using, she might try to attack somebody. Uh, and the way bardic inspiration is written in the rule book, you, she could roll the dice and then before she determines whether it hits or misses, she could decide whether she wanted to use the bardic inspiration I gave her. Uh, and this took the case because of the automation, it instantly tells you whether you hit or you miss. So it's a little bit of a uh, a slight change in, in how it would operate basically because of the automation and fantasy round. So what we normally do is just have people roll the dice, uh, say, oh, I just missed. Uh, you still don't know the AC uh, of the target. You just know that you missed. Uh, and then from there, Jen could roll a D6. I could say, well, roll a D6, put it in your modifiers, and then she could redrag the result over. It'll use the same original roll plus the D6 value, and then it'll say, oh, now you hit, or now you still missed, you know. So it kind of gets you close to that, but it's not 100% automation. All right. I guess I can go ahead and show equipment. I think that's something that you guys have already moved ahead on, right? Yeah. I've added a few things, yeah. <laughs> what? The rogue added things to her inventory? I'm surprised. <laughs> and there's stuff missing from my inventory. Right? Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> All right, so if we're going on through to the equipment, so how did you add equipment to your uh, guide me through that? Yeah, so there's a couple ways you could do it. One of them is from uh, like the reference manual. You can, uh, from there you can open up the, uh, I think it says equipment is the name of it. And then from there you can open up armor or uh, weapons and that'll filter the list down and show you different uh, columns of data based off of the type that you choose okay. or you can just click on the items and then you can just type in like if you know that you want specifically a rapier and leather armor you could just open up items and, and do a search for rapier drag it over to your character sheet do the same for leather and so you you can kind of do it either way either by category or otherwise gotcha all right so either working from the reference guide or from the item yeah section yeah so now you have you got the item window open you can just drag an item to your inventory Right. And it'll automatically add it. We'll say we're starting a fighter off with a breastplate. Seems seems appropriate. Now, do you have the um the base kits built out, or is it more of just a piecemeal kind yeah, of? Yeah. So, uh, like, what does your background come with again for a soldier? It comes with a Sweet. some kind of a pack, right? Yeah. So. Actually, I guess I can check. You, you shared it with me earlier. So. I did. An insignia of rank, a trophy taken from a fallen enemy, a dagger, broken blade, or whatever, a set of bone dice, a set of common dice, and a pouch containing 10 gold. Okay, so that doesn't have a pack, uh, but you did a fighter, yep. right? And a fighter has a pack, I think. Okay. Build. Here we go. There's equipment. Chain mail or leather. Okay, so breastplate's too good to start. Oh, and you start with the longbow. That's nice. It's pretty nice. In a dungeoneer's pack or an explorer's pack. So you would choose which of those two that you want. Um, but you could look at it in items. You could open up the description and see what's included in each before you make your decision. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have these to reference for this information. So let's go like if, if you did uh, either one of your two packs, that, that's kind of a little bit of a different look. It'll You'll add a lot of things to your sheet all at once. Okay. Yeah, that was helpful, the Explorer's pack. Take 
have our longbow. And some arrows. Sort of need those. Right. No, yeah. you're just going to a little bit people with your longbow. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I've got like a nine inch or a seven inch that might not be <laughs> outside the realm of police here. <laughs> My longbow is named Cudgel. <laughs> we'll take a shield. Now it says I get a martial weapon. Can I search by just martial? Uh, so that if you if you're on the items, mm -hmm. uh, one of the buttons at the top says uh, weapons. Uh -huh. so you see the, the click there? That has them broken down by chunk uh, or by group. Gotcha. I'm I'm lagging a bit on my end, but that's definitely on me. <laughs> well, that's some right. of that is right now with Fantasy Grounds Unity. We haven't optimized the performance, so some of our uh, okay. opening, like the very first time you open it, is, is slower than we would like right now. That'll be, by the time we're ready to officially launch, it should be snappy like it is in Fantasy Grounds Classic, but right now it's kind of, it is actually noticeably slower. Okay. So something to be aware of if you're testing out. Yeah, it's probably not your computer. <laughs> it's probably us. I'm in a little late. Can you briefly show some of the ways to roll your stats? Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, we did show that at the beginning, Dell and Dark, if you want to uh, go back and watch the VOD when we put it up. Um, there's actually a walkthrough on how to roll stats. So. Yeah. And I'll put it in chat as well. It's um, You're going to type in slash die. For, oh, sorry, I typed in the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't type in what I just said. 46. <laughs> drop one. Uh, that's what I use to roll my stats, which is uh, roll 46 and drop one. And then uh, if you look at our wiki, it's got a list of all the different macros you can use for dice rolling. If you're just rolling like four dice, you could just pick up a, a D6 and then right click to add three more and then roll that. And then you could manually remove the one, but you can you can write the macro so it automatically drops the low one for you. Looks like we'll take a battle axe. That's nice and dwarven. Yep. It would be funny if I forgot my thieves tools. <laughs> <laughs> Soap. Do I really need soap? I don't know. <laughs> well, it depends. I might have uh, some more stories to tell if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is like when you're deciding what type of campaign is this going to be? What am I going to be doing? Is there going to be a lot of goo? Yes, lots of goo. There might be. I mean, you, you won't know until you find out. <laughs> So let's take a look at the difference between the Dungeoneer's pack and Explorer's pack. So we want to open these first before we find out actually what's inside each. So now I can sit here and I can compare these two, right? Definitely looks like if I'm taking the Explorer's pack, I should be mindful of encumbrance. Thankfully, I'm a dwarf, so this is a problem. But <laughs> <laughs> taking a look between the two, uh, I don't know. She's a soldier. She's been places. Maybe we'll go with the Explorer's pack. So I added that to my screen. You'll see a whole bunch of stuff just got added to my inventory. So it's showing, you know, it's not just there as the Explorer's pack. It's showing me all the individual items that actually belong to the Explorer's pack. like that's everything I get from fighter I can do my other additions here from soldier yeah so uh, Sue DM basically said that there is a spot for ammo on your actions tab um, if you're using a ranged weapon so yeah you can't put in mm -hmm. like how much ammo you have of a specific type and yeah. then whenever you you do an attack with that weapon it'll actually mark off the ammo as you go there we go yeah, the <laughs> little the little circles next to the ammo um, do those indicate like how many the you amount. have or yep 
Yeah. So okay. if you change it from like 20 to 10 or whatever, it'll actually change the number of circles that you have and then it'll check them off. As you oh, do. okay. Okay. So I've got my arrows here. How many arrows are too many arrows? <laughs> <laughs> For an elf or for a like dwarf? It's an eternal question. Looks like a porcupine. Yeah, <laughs> I've got a lot. Like a hoarder. <laughs> right. Hey. So we know that we have 20 arrows for our longbow. Added that there. Now got all these okay. little circles that you can check mark off as you're firing them. Yep. Oh, I see. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, and if you actually do an attack, it'll it'll automatically. Uh, check it off for you, which is pretty Okay. Cheap. So filled means you have it, and if the circle is empty, you don't have it. Is that no, right? It's the other way. It's the other way around. The other way around. It'll, okay. it'll mark it off as you. It'll check the little circles as you use them, basically. Okay. I'll just have to start shooting stuff and see if that work. Yep. <laughs> All right. What am I missing here? Uh, do do do. And at least on my end, my character's more or less done. She would function, so. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the good thing is you can kind of get up and, and playing pretty quickly, and then you can always just add stuff later on. I know I've, mm -hmm. uh, some people spend a lot more time on their characters. I, when I'm running a longer campaign, a lot of times, I'm one of those obsessive people. that just, uh, I like to plan out my character from beginning to end. So I'm not doing any of that. I just did level one, so I'm, I'm yeah. all finished and ready to go. Perfect. So uh, I did have a question. On my character sheet, my hit points are blank. Aha. Uh, -huh. uh, let's see. Did you drag your class in already? Your rogue uh, level one. Uh huh. You did? Yeah, I did. Oh, I see. So I, I actually see on your sheet. Uh, it shows your max hit points are ten. So you're yeah, the, okay. The other ones are wound and uh, temporary hit points. Oh, okay. Like I'm on the main tab of the character sheet, so I'm looking at the bottom of it, and it says yeah. like hit points and everything. So that's just. The one in the middle is, is your max hit points. Okay. That's, that's what you're going to be at. So uh, the way that it tracks in our combat tracker is mm -hmm. uh, it has whatever your max is, and it just has however many wounds you have. So like if you get hit okay. with the sword, you might have six wounds, but you have 10 max hit points. Oh, I see. Okay. And then underneath, it'll have hit die. And for a level one character, there's only going to be one dice in there. But there if you is. Have, mm -hmm. If you have multiple uh, classes, then you'll have potentially like it'll say three instead of uh you know one for the the main one and then you'll have other dice for the different types of hit dice that you have and then you can spend those in between and then uh you know during a short rest you can spend hit dice to heal yourself up cool okay yeah and then I guess. after a long rest you gain them all back which for us is just one all right and uh on my character sheet special move and special defenses are blank how do i fill those in with something Oh, we got to learn some special moves or defenses, I guess. I don't, I don't have <laughs> yeah. anything in mind right now either. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. No uh, dance moves. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe some dance moves. I'm gonna save that for later in the stream, though. But I imagine, <laughs> I imagine like later on, once you get evasion as a rogue, that might show up under your yes. special defenses. Ooh. My All my right. evasion maneuver is always the moonwalk. <laughs> All right. Perfect. I'm gonna moon rock, walk right out of this club. So one of the other handy things that I'd like to show here as well is, you know, now that you guys have your characters created, um, there is a party sheet. There is a place that you can put all the characters that are participating in the adventure in one place for quick reference. Um, and so that's pretty easy to do as well, right? I just drag your character into the party sheet. Yep. And get rid of our earlier versions. Yes, <laughs> which I did already. So. Uh, trying to <laughs> steal all of our experience and in, in, uh, inventory now. <laughs> So uh, that's from the character selection, right? So I'll go right. over to the character selection. Or or from the upper left corner of the window where our little portraits are shown. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. there. So I can just draw your portrait. Ah, perfect. I can just drag your portrait in. That's much easier. Jenkins O'Blarney looks very contemplative <laughs> in his character. There's a lot to think of, lots to think about. That was I'm using the uh, Baldur's Gate portrait pack for that, which is uh, the actual character's name was Garrick. <laughs> but he looked he looked like he was uh, thinking of a good story to tell. Trying to find a way to get his way out of whatever predicament he may have just got himself into. Perfect. So how do you pronounce your character? Is it? Uh, I'll let you say it first. Uh, Lith <laughs> Litha. Litha. Um, I think that's how I would pronounce it too. I, I've only read it um, 
personal story right now. I'm reading Jason and the Argonauts, and there oh, is a, a naiad named Litha who is pretty cool. So I'm like, hey, that'll be a good character name. So because I thought about uh, using old character names that you know I've you know resurrect from the past that sort of thing, but I'm like, nah, no. I came across it last night, so I'm like, yeah, that's, that's her Pretty name. Cool. That's her name. Perfect. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and close mine out because she was there for yeah. just demonstration purposes only. <laughs> bye bye. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, if you want to open up my character sheet and show during the uh, during the stream the actions tab, what it looks like, because I've yes. got a mix of um, of weapon attacks and some spell attacks. Perfect. And so uh, we can maybe demonstrate a little bit of that, which we can show during the during the actual stream too. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, so I've got that open now, actually. It uh, looks like you've got uh, dagger equipped for both ranged uh, and melee. Uh, dagger and a rapier. And uh, yeah. And so with the dagger, it has, um, I guess I can set ammo to one. So I have one dagger. <laughs> so I could throw it. <laughs> and, don't have, and then I don't have a dagger anymore. <laughs> so, uh, thankfully, I don't have my rapier set up as a ranged weapon. So I'm not going to throw that away at anybody. Uh, but yeah, so those are all set up. And then I'll have on the... The one column has the D20 plus five. All of mine use the same thing because it's a finesse weapon. I can use my dexterity. And then on the on the column next to that, it has the the damage that I would do. And it all all of these have to be piercing, but Fantasy Grounds actually knows the difference between piercing and slashing and bludgeoning weapons. So if that comes Ooh. into play, depending upon what resistance uh, or vulnerabilities some uh, target might have, it'll actually take that into, into effect, which is pretty nice. Uh, then down below, I've got my spell slots. And I've got uh, some powers. I've got some cantrips. I added uh, for Vicious Mockery, it comes preset with the 1d4 psychic damage if they fail their saving throw. But I actually added another effect because I really wanted it to automate the disadvantage that it gives people if they fail. Awesome. So now I can, I can just click a button and it'll add disadvantage, which will apply to that uh, target's next attack and will automatically go away uh, once they've expended their next action. So. Um, and then we've got, I picked a couple of different spells. So those all pre parsed out with like Thunder Wave to automatically do the saving throw uh, and, and Silent Image to automatically, um, you know, track an effect with a number of durations. So I can keep track of, okay, well, I'm concentrating on it. As long as I'm concentrating, it'll stay in effect. And then I can, when I'm done concentrating, I'll remove it from my own combat tracker and it'll go away. Oh, very cool. It's a great way to keep track of all of those little things that you have that are based on rounds, round effects. And... Absolutely. Awesome. And we how, about you, how about you, Jen? Are you all done with yours? Still working on it? I, I think I'm pretty done. If if I've missed something, I'll discover it along the way, but it's, it's pretty <laughs> rounded out. All right. Cool. Sounds great. We're actually, we, we did pretty well focusing on character creation today, which is exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to give mm -hmm. folks a chance to kind of familiarize themselves with the tools. Uh, but what I can do is I can at least walk us through the introduction of showing up in the first town uh, and Sweet. give you guys something to look forward to the next time we get together. Okay. Leave us on a cliffhanger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So something that I've done, uh, and I'll walk this through for folks who are watching, uh, that I did prior to the stream was I set up several of the things that I might need the access to on my bar at the bottom. You'll notice all these little tabs. Uh, they might be just slightly inside our, our frame here, but um, you can take, I think, any page in the game and just drag it down to a tab for quick reference or to open it. And so that's exactly what I've done with Town of Phandalin. Um, I believe I have shared that. So you share screen. And what that button does is that now, you know, both my players have this map that's popped up on uh, on their screens as a uh, result of that action. And they can see all of the different places in Phandalin that they can go in for. Um, and the other thing I prepared to is being able to get to the box text. So a lot of the information that is in this window uh, is useful to you as a game master. Uh, and the stuff that's going to be relevant to players, you can share with a click, which is Great. So in this case, I'll share the box text. And that goes straight to chat. And if you're on a voice chat program, you can read it out loud, but it's also kind of nice to just toss it in chat, you know, both for accessibility and as well as so people can follow along while you're So let's start. Nestled in the rocky hills of the snow-capped Sword Mountains is the mining town of Phandalin. 
which consists of 40 or 50 simple log buildings. Crumbling stone ruins surround the newer houses and shops, showing how this must have been a much larger town in centuries past. Vandalin's residents are quiet, hardworking folk who came from distant cities to eke out a life amid the harsh wilderness. They are farmers, stonecutters, blacksmiths, traders, prospectors, and children. The town has no walls and no garrison, but most of the adults keep weapons within easy reach in case the need for arms should arise. Visitors are welcome here, particularly if they have coin to spend or news to share. Stonehill Inn at the center of town offers modest lodging and meals. A couple of doors down from the inn, posted outside the town master's hall, is a job board for adventurers. Hmm. Well, Lisa, this sounds like the perfect place for us to start our adventuring career and come up with a grand set of tales that we can regale the children with at our village. <laughs> Definitely. We can get into a lot of trouble here. You can get into a lot of trouble, and I can try <laughs> to bail you out. <laughs> well, it sounds like you guys have a town to explore. You've got a job board to peruse, uh, and uh, and we have a solid set of characters that are ready to go off. Yeah. Well, I know that you spin coin faster than we can often make it, but perhaps we should stop by and visit the uh, the job board first, just to have an idea of if there's any sort of thing of interest okay. here. I agree with that plan. So I'm going to open the town master's hall where they want to go. Uh, and so the job board is out in front of this building called the town master's hall. Town master's hall has sturdy stone walls, I'll come to chat as well, a pitched wooden roof and a bell tower at the back. The job board next to the front door features a sparse number of notices, all written in common and in the same hand. So mm -hmm. there are a handful of quests that I believe I can actually share with you guys directly. Yeah, absolutely. And then on the party sheet, there's a quest section, so you could drag it to the, if we if we take any of them on, basically, you could just put it in the party sheet. Perfect. Cool. It. So in this case, I'll open this. Uh, one of the things that's provided in the essential kit uh, are these cards for each quest, and so they've been imported into Fantasy Grounds as images that I can share with the player. So here is one of the quests that you can see. Hmm, treasure uh, piques my interest. Mm-hmm. Ooh, white dragon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I can share that one. There's your second one that's available. Rock gnomes versus white dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and here's your... Let's just beginning our adventuring career. I'm not sure a white dragon is quite what we're up for at the moment. Exactly. Could you imagine... <laughs> And there's a third one that you have available. So there's all these little notices all written by the same person, you think, uh, kind of offering different things to do. Hmm. Well, there is a local midwife who I could help, you know, comfort <laughs> <laughs> with, with stories. But again, white dragon. <laughs> true, true. Let's see. Where did the one go with the... Rock gnomes. Gnomen guard. Ooh, magical inventions. They might have something with which to defeat the dragon. I like the way you think. Perhaps like an <laughs> arrow of white dragon slaying is, is just laying there for the taking. <laughs> right. You never know. Mm hmm. Of course, we won't tell it the story of the way that we defeated the dragon. We will have a long, drawn out combat where we. You know, we nearly were overcome, but then we came out, you know, triumphant in the end. Exactly. <laughs> well, 50 gold sounds like a great way to yes. uh, start off our adventuring career here. I do have some gold that should get us through for a while. Plus, uh, you know, hopefully the bar, the barkeep and innkeeper are, are you open had to, gold. Uh, I had gold. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I'll check my pouch, actually. Did you take it from me again? <laughs> If the gambling losses are not enough, you, you're pilfering from me on top of that. That's too much. Yeah. So I can assign this quest to you guys, it sounds like. Awesome. Yes. Let's take two. I think this is the way to go. The Nomen Guard? All right. Mm -hmm. So I'll drag that. Now, where does that go in the party sheet? That goes to? There should be on the XP tab. There should ah. be a quest on the XP tab. Oh, I need to remove this old one from our testing. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Right click on it and do delete. There you go. So now you have the Nomen Guard quest listed. Cool. And uh, we will start our next adventure on your way to Nomen Guard, what that will be like. So got just a few minutes here. So if there's any last minute questions, we can tackle those. But uh, I want to make sure that we wrap it up so that we're not running <laughs> running behind. But <laughs> I, uh, thank you, first off, Doug and Jen, for being here today, for uh, hopping yeah, no, in. This is going to be fun. I can already tell. I haven't. Uh, it's funny because you know when we when I bought Fantasy Grounds back in 2009 when I bought the company, um, I ended up just working so much that I think I played less <laughs> after owning a company doing it than, than I did beforehand. Mm -hmm. So this is any opportunity to play is great. Awesome. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to running for you guys. Um, I'm a regular GM. I've done quite a lot in the past on a variety of different systems, but I'm actually still fairly new to, to all of this side of it in terms of running it digitally. So there's a lot to learn and I'm excited to do it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are in that boat right now. So it's cool that we're doing this so we can all learn together. Absolutely. All right. Well, yeah, if, uh, if anyone is interested in Fantasy Grounds, I'll just do a quick shout out for that. We, uh, from our website, we have Fantasy Grounds Classic and we have Fantasy Grounds Unity. We are recommending that people try Fantasy Grounds Unity. That's uh, kind of our, the, the path with the greatest functionality that will be expanded upon, um, you know, as soon as we kind of work out some issues, of course. Um, but it is early access, so do keep that in mind. We also have a 30 day, 30 day money back guarantee on anything that you purchase from our website. And then on top of that, right now, there are a few adventures that are currently unlocked for all licensed, licensed users of Fantasy Grounds. So that is the Lost Mine of Pandelver is unlocked for maybe another week or two, I think. Yeah, uh, I think May, May 5th, May 7th, yeah. May 7th. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's unlocked through May 7th. And then after that period of time, it'll it'll relock and then you'll have to basically uh, own the Lost Mine of Pandelver to, to continue playing that. But you're able to kind of take a look at it, regardless of whether you want to run that adventure. I highly re recommend checking it out because it's a fantastic uh, short adventure that shows how you would maybe organize your own adventure. So if you're a big on homebrew, uh, still check that out and then see how they how we kind of laid it out. And then hopefully that'll give you some ideas on how you can organize your own campaign. Uh, in addition, we have the Sunless Citadel which unlocked uh, a week afterwards and is, is good for another week, so through the 14th. And then we have the Sunless Citadel, and that's all through Wizards of the Coast has allowed us to give that away to everybody to use during this, this kind of uh, global pandemic quarantine that's going on everywhere. And I believe there's, there's another one that's going to be unlocking later today, too. So uh, stay tuned for that. There should be a fourth, fourth uh, adventure that's going to be unlocked. So lots of, lots of things you can try out and play, and hopefully you can get in. And in four weeks' time, you should be able to, you know, if play through a, one of those adventures or at least get pretty far through the process. And at the very least, if you just want to take, take a look at them, poke around them, use them as a learning tool for you to get acquainted with fantasy grants, it's a really great oppor time, uh, opportunity for you to do that, uh, even if you want to build your own content from that point forward. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks again for joining us, guys. Uh, I will go ahead and uh, send us off for the time being. We'll be back here next week uh, to do a little bit more. We'll go and explore explore uh nomen guard and uh get into combat and encounters and and sort of the way things go from there so yes <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much guys take care see you next time it's been great